I'm currently shopping for a truck to do a 4x4 camper build with and they gave me this very popular and highly sought after Toyota Tacoma 4x4 regular cab to test drive and I'm going to do a review on this truck but I'm going to keep it real with you. It's got that it budget sound. Let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. If you want to get my gear like this ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet, motor vlog camera, airbag vest to help keep you safe. All of my gear, I always include links in the description and comment section of my video. This 2011 Toyota Tacoma. This is 4x4. It has about 95,000 miles on it. They're asking 12.9 for it. I know I was looking at a Toyota Tundra with a 5.7 V8 and uh, you know over 100,000 miles on it, and uh, you know they want damn near 20,000. So I thought about getting one of these little trucks and building it out to a, a camper truck, getting one of those lightweight pop top camper deals for the back, and uh, putting some bigger wheels, do a lift on it or whatnot. Um, but I don't know about this truck, man. It's got some, let me see. The problem with these uh, Tacomas and the Tundras is the, these frames rust out, but I called Toyota. This has actually got a new frame back in 2020. Frame looks pretty good. Tab's kind of beat up a bit. Look at it, it's got some scratches there. It's the first time I actually drove in a regular cab Tacoma. I wish I had a little more space like the Tundra regular cabs have. Um, you can't really lounge the chair back much unless you push the chair up. Take a look under here. The leaf springs. The leaf springs look look okay. I'm looking for a truck to do a camper van camper build. Here we go. I mean, 94,000 miles is nothing on these these uh, four cylinder engines. That's a good looking little truck got the window the slides in the back the hell is this got an arrow on here man that's kind of ghetto let's take it for a test drive this is the four cylinder by the way the 2.7 it's got that <laughs> it budget sound it budget four cylinder sound so you gotta slam the gas to get it up to 35. <laughs> I mean, it's budget, you know. What do you expect? You know, brand new, I think this 4x4, I think this probably ran about low 20s, brand spanking new. So, I mean, these things do, like I said, they're rare. So. I don't care about rare though, man. I just want something that I want. that has got some good, decent power. Obviously, <laughs> doesn't have a lot of power. Um, I'll post the power specs uh, in this video here. If I take this out to Colorado, you know, up in the, the mountains or whatnot, it'd probably struggle going up steep, steep hills, uh, those mountain roads. I, you know, I had a Back when I lived in Colorado, I had a uh, two. I bought a brand new 2001 Nissan Frontier and a four-cylinder, a base model with an access cab. And I tell you, we ended up getting rid of that pretty quickly, man, because that four-cylinder uh, engine struggled up those uh, those, those mountains, and uh, it was man, it was very lethargic, and it ate a ton of gas because it it, it struggled so hard going up those those uh, you know mountain roads so we got rid of it and got a v6 pathfinder and loved that vehicle uh, back then but out here in ohio i mean we don't have any you know steep roads or anything so you don't really need a powerful engine or whatnot um, this rides like a truck um, i mean it's got a it's not obviously as smooth as my lexus rx 330 um, but what do you expect? I mean, it's just a, the basic work truck here. These things are in high demand though, because they're so rare. Man, I'm telling you, some of these uh, people are selling them for like $20,000. It's crazy. <laughs> Man. 
but uh and they're, they're really kind of budget to be honest with you the tundra i drove the tundra regular cab i wish i'd have bought that one they wanted twenty three thousand some dollars for it and they had sixty nine thousand miles on it was a 2013 but man I'm telling you, there's a stark contrast between driving the, the Tundra 5.7 V8, obviously, in this little four-cylinder truck. I mean, the build quality on the Tundra is it's just better overall, period. And they're not that much more expensive. I mean, I could have bought one that I just missed for like uh, 14000 It had 107,000 miles on it and it had the 5.7 uh, V8. And um, sorry I missed that one, but this is actually has cruise control on it. And it's got the bucket seats in here, not the bench seat, the uh, you know the budget bench seat. You know, you with the bench seat though, you can uh, fit a third person. Would it be hard pressed to fit a third person in this this cab here? It looks like one of the tire sensor is bad on there. It's got a tire sensor light. Uh, let me pull in here. Let's take a look here acceleration is lethargic what, what you don't you know that's what, what do you expect it's a four cylinder um the gas mileage from my understanding is not that big of a difference from the v6 yeah kind of kind of when you turn it oh, it's kind of making some hum when you turn it i don't know I have to have i I would definitely get an inspection on this if I were to buy it. I mean, the engine's solid on this thing. you think they would have cleaned it up. Look at that. It's got dirt on there. Brakes are a bit spongy. I tell you, it sure is a stark contrast driving my Lexus RX30. It's got 102,000 miles versus this Toyota Tacoma 4-cylinder with 94,000 miles. I'll tell you that. <laughs> But that's got a V6 and luxury and everything else. But you can pick those Lexus RX 330s up for like freaking five, six thousand bucks, man. And it drives way better than this. See, in order, see how with the regular cab with the Tacoma, it has no space back here. So you're slammed up against the back here. I'm six foot tall. I fit fine in here. But if you want to lean back, you have to, you know, push the seat all the way up and and you get a, a little quarter uh, of the seat back. It's got crank windows here. I would definitely replace the stereo system if I were to buy this truck. Uh, this is one thing about small dealerships, what they do is they patch things up. See, this is a patch here. They put some sort of patch and then they spray paint it on and you can see it's rust underneath there. See how it bubbles up? That's a trick they do. They'll use Bondo or some patch or something and then try to spray paint to cover it up so fools don't know any better. See here. See that? It's got some rust there. Look, it's got some rust here. I talked to an auto repair shop down the street from this dealership and they said a few people brought this truck uh, to their shop and he said the truck checked out. It didn't have any codes or any, any error codes or anything but it did have some rust he said and he said that people wouldn't go down on the price um, that's the reason why uh, it hasn't sold it's been on the market for 11 days here in Ohio what do you expect with rust most of the cars have rust there's the frame the frame was replaced in 2020 the frame doesn't look bad but eventually that that surface rust will turn into uh, start eating away over time probably have to get that address I, think I would rather go ahead with the v6 now if I'm gonna get a Tacoma I've also driven the second generation Tacoma v6 and I'm not impressed with the v6 power either I feel like it's underpowered uh, it's overrated truck I mean it's overpriced on the used market they're commanding over 20,000 plus dollars for high mileage Tacomas I mean for what it feels very budget for what you get. Yes, they're highly reliable and when modded, they're absolutely awesome off-road. But honestly, you'll get a much better value with a first-gen or second-gen Tundra that oftentimes you can get cheaper than a used Tacoma. And the Tundra with the 4.7 or 5.7 V8, it's got much more power. It's bigger inside, better build quality, better ride quality, just better looking, better in every way 
for a cheaper price and it makes no sense to get the Tacoma unless you're a hardcore off-road enthusiast. But I think the Tundra is a better value to be honest with you. They're not, it's not that much more expensive for the used ones. As long as you get one that doesn't have any problems. Very budget, lethargic power. No room in the cab, which is expected with a regular cab, but you get the, the small size, so it's going to be a lot more nimble. It's going to be easier to take off-road on the tight trails to uh, a, a great turning radius. You think they would have cleared this out, man? I mean, come on, serious, dude. <laughs> Look, oh, snap. Look at this. Rust. Look at that. Look at that rust down there, dude. Oh, my goodness. The bed's rusted out. But they want shit 12 9 13 000. that's crazy man i can go get a tundra extended cab right now for for the same price with about 120,000 miles it's got a big old v8 it gets about 15 miles per gallon this gets probably i bet you you know you keep slamming the, the gas on this trying to get it up to speed it's going to drink a lot of gas like that frontier i had back in the early 2000s and, uh, and you're sitting at about 15 miles per gallon anyhow. <laughs> you might as well get the bigger engine, man. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Uh, would you buy this truck for uh, 12 9 that they're asking? No wonder it's been sitting on the market for 11 days. All right. I'm going to take this back. <laughs> I'm going to do some test rides with some other trucks and uh, share it with the channel because, like I said, I'm doing a 4x4 truck camper build. That's my plans. And, uh, but this truck is not the one I want to do it with. So I'm going to pass on this. Leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. Appreciate all you guys. Make sure to hit thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell symbol so you get notified when my new videos release. But I release new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till next time.